What's up everyone? At long last, the Payload CMS team has released a feature that allows you to customize a text's state in your lexical editor. A text state can be things like font weight, color, and decoration, among other things. That means you can now style your text on the fly without having to use CSS or any other kind of styling workaround. If you want the code that I use in this project, there's a link to the repo in the description. Now let's dive in. To start, you'll need to upgrade your Payload CMS project to version 3.42.0 before working with this tutorial. This feature has been available since 3.39, but it wasn't until 3.41 that default colors was exported for use in client components, which is partially what we'll be covering today. In 3.42, a bug was fixed in the lexical editor that makes this video possible without any workarounds. So let's go over to our package.json file and we're gonna upgrade our project by selecting all of our previous version and replacing all with 3.42.0. Now we can run pnpmi and everything is installed correctly. At the time of this recording, this is a young feature. Breaking changes should be expected as the capabilities of the text state feature expands. This feature is meant to be more than just a way to add color to your text, which is why this isn't called the text color feature. Out of the box, you'll have a wide range of font colors and backgrounds to choose from, but we'll also extend the feature to include things like colored strike throughs, extra bold fonts, and more. One last warning. You may see warnings in your console that you're using an unsupported style property. This is an expected warning since we're applying inline styles to JSX elements using the true CSS attributes. You don't need to worry about these warnings though as they will not affect your project. Since we've already upgraded our project, we'll need to go over to any of our lexical editors and add the feature to a config. We'll do this in our posts config. At the top of my file, I'm going to import two things from our rich text lexical package, text state feature, as well as default colors. Now we can scroll back down to our lexical editor and we're gonna add a new feature, which we just imported, which is text state feature. And now that we have our feature, we need to add the state option. So we can do that here, which takes an object of key value pairs that define the states that we want to include in the feature and the values they represent. So in state, we'll have color as one example. So we can include our color, which is going to take all of our default colors, text, as well as a background option, which will do the same thing, but default colors, background. And now that's the basic config. Now, before we spin up our development server, let's generate our types as well as our import map. And then we can spin up our development server after that. And now we can go to our blog posts and I can go to our blog one test. And we can see that we have some text that is ready to be styled. And now what this looks like in the editor, just out of the box is we can select text and now we can change the color of the text as well as the background. Now by default, we can mix and match these colors. So I can have orange text and an orange background. Obviously we wouldn't want to do that, but we are able to mix and match our styles like that. If you want to prevent being able to change both the background color and the actual color of the text at the same time, you can just move your default colors, background and text into the same state key here. So if I save this and refresh, I can try to update my sum text to include both red text and a red background, but you can see here that it's just toggling between the two. But I want these to be separate, so I do have the control to change these as I want. Now, what if we wanted to add a font weight state to apply different font weights in our text? Well, you could add a state key called font weight, and we'll define it as bolder, give it a label of bolder, and then a CSS object of font weight bolder. So now I can save our config and refresh. And then I can see in my dropdown now, we have bolder show up at the bottom of the list. If I select it, I can see the styles applied as well. You can do the same thing with any state key you would like to use. For example, you can include a new key called font size or just size, and we'll create one that's for large text it's going to have a label of large text and then a CSS object that changes the font size to 
large. Now when I save this and refresh our editor, I can select any amount of text and make it large text instead. One more use case we might use this for is underlines. So we can underneath our background add an underline state key. And let's add a solid option. So we'll have solid with the label of solid. And then a CSS object of text decoration. We'll include underline, and then we'll want to do a text underline offset, which we'll do of four pixels. And then maybe we want a dashed option where we can use the label of dashed, and then another CSS object which will have text decoration, and we'll do underline dashed, and then again, our text underline offset of four pixels. And just for fun, why don't we add in here a red line through option, which will have a label of red line through, and then a CSS object of text decoration line through, a text decoration style, of dotted, and finally, text decoration color of red. Now I can save this and refresh again, and we'll see that we now have solid, dashed, and red line through all as options for us to style our text. Now, of course, instead of putting red line through here and underline, we could create a strike through state key as well, but I just wanted to include this as an example. State keys need unique names to avoid collisions. Just like any other object, you can't have two keys with the same names. So if you did decide to store a key called bolder in both color and in background, only one would be selected. Just be careful to use each key only once. Now you don't need to use default colors here if you don't want to. So if I go up to our color state key, we can get rid of our default colors and then I can add my own by just typing in red, for example, and we can do a label of red text and then a CSS object of color red. And if I save this and refresh again, we'll see that we no longer have a long list of text colors, but we do have red text still available to me. Now, this is just an example. I prefer to use all of the default colors, so I will leave that enabled. Now that we've gone over the configuration of this young feature, let's move on to how to render this on the front end. Before we do that though, check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss when I release more content about Payload CMS, Next.js, and other modern web dev technology. Tired of trying to keep up with all the news and updates across the technologies and companies you use? Sign up for my newsletter to get a bi-weekly overview of all the dev news from across the internet. The link to that is in the description. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to it. Again, you don't need to use default colors when rendering your rich text component, but if you want to use these colors and you want to use them in a client component, like the form builder component we built a couple videos ago, you'll need to make your rich text renderer a client component. This is because we'll need to import the default colors from the client package of rich text lexical. If you're like me and have images in your lexical rich text blocks that are using an environment variable to serve the images, you'll need to update that variable to one that Next.js can read. For me, I have an environment variable called Next Public S3, so I need to update all of my S3 variables so they can be read by client components. Once that's done, I'll add the use client directive to my rich text renderer file. So to do that, I'm going to search all my files for my process.env.s3 and change this to be next public s3. And so I can copy this and we can start pasting it into each of these additional s3 environment variables I have included in my project. And that should do it. So now I can go over to our rich text renderer and use the use client directive. And then we should be good to go to start converting our text using our text converter, JSX converter. The first thing we'll need to do is import a few things. So we're gonna import our default colors from rich text lexical client. And then we need to import two types. The first being our state values as well as our text state feature props. And we're going to be getting this from our node modules. 
slash payload CMS, rich text lexical feature server from text state. Now we need to define a color state constant with text state feature props assigned to it and give it state here. We'll start simple by only including our color for now, which will have default colors dot text and our background, which will have our default colors background. We'll then need a type that we'll use to extract keys from a nested object, which is what our state keys are. So we'll use type extract all color keys. Then we'll say for every property in the key of T, we will check if that object looks like the state values object. And if it does, we'll return our key of T, P. Otherwise, we'll just ignore it and throw the output out. Then we'll convert all of it into a list. So this key of T with the P in the square brackets gets all of the keys from the state values object so we can start returning our styles in our text converter. We'll then need a new type called color state keys and we'll want to look at color state and extract all valid state keys to be included in a single type which we just named color state keys. So we're going to extract all color keys from type of color state. Then we need to move on to our text Text converter constant here. We'll first create a new constant called styles and assign React CSS properties to it as its type and set it equal to an empty object. We'll then check if our node has state, which is represented by a dollar sign. If it does, we'll use object entries on our color state and then map through all the entries using the for each method and we'll use our state key and state values as our arguments in the callback function. We'll then need a new constant called state value, which will be set equal to check if again, node has a state. And if it does, we'll set the value of state value to be node with the dollar sign again with state and get the state key and cast this as our color state keys. Then we can check if state value exists and if state values has the state value property. If it does, we'll use object.assign to assign our CSS object from state values, state value.css to our styles constant above. Lastly, we'll add a check to the end of our formatting here. And I will check if, again, node has a state value. And if it does, we can set our text equal to be a span with our text in it. And our span will have a style attribute with our styles object included in it. With that done, we can add some styles to our text here. So I'm going to add some yellow text with a red background. We'll also make this large. We'll make this whole section large, and then we'll strike out this section with red dots. So now if I publish our changes, we can go to our front end by going to posts, blog one. And when our blog one renders, we can see that our text color and our background color has changed, but we never set up styles for the rest of our custom text features here. So what we can do is just copy from color all the way down to the end of our font weight object here and then paste this over in our text converter in place of color and background here. So now when I paste this, make it look neater and then save, we can now see that this text has updated. We now see some larger text. And now if we make more changes, like we just change all of this text to be green and we publish those changes, we see green text show up here as well. So each time you define a style outside of your default styles provided, you'll need to define it again in your color state constant like I just demonstrated. And that's all there is to it. While the feature is rather young, it still is a powerful way to manage your content and style it on the fly. I expect this feature to mature very quickly into a tool that will make your life and the lives of your editors much easier. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who might also find it useful. 
check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and receiving notifications so you never miss when I release more content about Payload CMS, Next.js, Tailwind, CSS, and more. Also, again, consider subscribing to my newsletter to stay up to date with modern web dev news from across multiple platforms. There's a link to that in the description. If you have suggestions or questions, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.